but then they kind of lose that heartbeat, that why and why they started making because they're constantly working on someone else's ideas. This is the second video of a series in if I would start over my art business, I would do it like this. And we are diving into the what are we making this time. If you're not familiar with my work and this is the first video you come across, my name is Roxy, I'm an artist. I mainly paint with oil paints and I used to paint a lot with acrylic. You see behind me some canvases that I made and I focus on figurative art, very colorful, a lot of self-portraits, a lot of introspective work. But next to my personal work, I also do illustrative work, commercial work for uh, commissions for brands, and I do live illustration work. So it's a lot of variety in where my income comes from. Now that we have established why we are making, if you haven't seen that video, go check out the first one first. We are diving into what we are making. So that means, are you a watercolor artist that works on paper and you just need a desk? Or are you a painter that works large scale and you need quite a big space to work in, like me? Or maybe you're even a muralist and you need buildings to work on. This is not a set question that you need one answer to and it cannot change forever. It is something that can develop, it definitely developed for me. I started out on my table at home and then I got my first studio and then I got my second studio and now I'm in my third studio and my work keeps growing with it. I'm also not saying I will never paint on a building. I mean, it would be really cool. <laughs> but saying that, it is nice to have a starting point for yourself. It's good to realize if you have, for example, a very steady hand and you make almost technical drawings and they take a long time to develop or if you have a very rough handwriting like I do as well and you're pretty quick with painting. These kind of things, they can obviously develop, but in general, you're kind of gonna be in a steady hand, takes a long time, very precise, or you're gonna be in the rough, uh, very abstract, ab expressive uh, painting uh, side. There's like a, a ton in between, but it's good to realize kind of what camp you're on, like what genre you're on. What do you want to make? I'm not asking you what you're making now, but what you actually want to make. It could be that you're at a point where what you want to make is not possible because you don't have a building to paint on, for example, or you don't have a big studio to make large oil paintings. I mean, that totally makes sense, especially in the beginning, you're gonna have to start small and work your way up. But if that is the case, I would encourage you to try it first. Try that big scale oil painting first. Try that building first before you set out your path to reach that goal and maybe you're gonna find out that it's actually not something that you want. Obviously, some things are harder than others. It's pretty hard to find a building to paint on. However, there might be a wall that is available for you to paint on temporarily and you can try it out because Painting on paper, small, is very different than painting on a really big wall, for example. So you don't have to paint a 40-story building first. That's not gonna be happening, but you can at least try a big skill, see if you like it. Same with large-scale paintings. Try it first, and whether it's on your living room floor or whether it's in someone else's studio that you can visit for a time, see how it works. If that is something that you wanna to work towards, that's perfect. If it's something that you find out you don't actually like, then you don't have to work towards it. It doesn't help to think I wanna do this, but then never create the opportunity for yourself to not do it because you're not able to, because if that is the heartbeat of your art, you are going to find a way to do it. Obviously there are different situations, not, not everyone is in the same situation, but if that's something that you really want, 
definitely try it out first. If you find out that after you painted that big wall, and I'm taking the big wall as, as an example. I think it's I the most obvious thing that people try and find out that they don't like. If you have painted that wall and you find out you don't like it, that is totally fine. It's not something that you have to be regretful about. It's just something that you found out you don't like. Maybe it's the physical labor that is too exhausting. Maybe you find out that big skill actually needs a lot of detail that you don't want to add. Maybe you find out that it's just a lot of work and there's a lot of different factors that you need to count in like finding a wall, finding a big building to paint on, getting permits, something like that. Maybe that's something that you find out and you actually don't enjoy it. Could also be that you find out that the people that work in that area are not the people that you want to hang around with because you don't really like the vibe. I don't know. It's different people in every area of art. And I'm not saying everyone is the same, but I am saying that there are areas where you like the people more and you fit in more with your personality than other areas. Illustrators, very different from fashion illustrators. Artists, fine artists, painters, very different from fashion illustrators. If you don't prefer being with the people that work in that area, it's gonna be pretty hard to enjoy it. To get your why to work out and continue doing this in a sustainable, long-term way. Since this is a business series of videos, we are diving into this chapter of how we are going to do it. It's like we have all the words, like the why, the what, the how. But now that we've established what we are making, it's time to find out how we are actually making any money in that area and how we're gonna, going to live of it because that is just the reality in today's world. If you do not have to worry about money, that's great for you. I mean, go pursue those creative goals. I am very jealous of you. But I think for 99.9% .9 of us, we're going to have to think of how we're earning money of it so that we can keep on doing it. It's not bad to earn money from your art. It's actually a good thing because earning money gets money into the business. If you have profit in the business, then it makes you make better decisions for your business and for your art and what you want to do in the long term. I think it actually makes you more creative as well because you don't have to think of the next thing coming up. You can kind of decide on long-term projects and decide which ones are good for you and not just for your wallet. In the next chapter, we're diving deeper into the numbers, but for now, we're going to explore ideas and that is good enough for now. I come from a design background. I studied fashion design in school, but it's a design background nonetheless. Art and design are very different things. You can be a very creative designer, but you can also be a very commercial artist. And those are different things. In short, and I don't want to step on anyone's toes here because it's a very touchy subject with a lot of people. I think it's art when it comes from you. You don't have anyone tell you what to do. It comes from you. And it's design once it's designed for someone else. Either you get a commission from someone or you design something for a certain product, for example. Those things, they are separate and it's good to keep those in mind when you're thinking about art and design. What are those things? Illustration in general is also a design job because you're making an image from someone else and it could be that it's coming from you and then someone else publishes it for you. That's a, I think that is kind of a gray area, but it could also be that you get a commission to, to do an editorial illustration with a certain topic and then you design the image. That's a design job. I'm already saying it in the word, like it's a design job. 
As an artist, you can make something in a series to fit a certain concept, but in general, it comes from you. It could be that you're making something to fit a certain exhibition and it's a portrait exhibition or it's a abstract exhibition and it needs to be in the genre of a portrait or in an abstract painting. I think that is still art. However, if it kind of gets in this area where maybe a brand wants you to make something and it needs to fit their specific car or it's something that needs to be red, blue and yellow and it needs to involve a sunset, I don't know. The more particular it gets, it, the more it kind of moves into the design world. Why I am saying this is because both are very different. They are both very different ways to approach your art business as well. Some people love working with clients alone. Some people love working on personal projects. And I think it's good to know that both can exist in the same space. However, that they are both very different. And in general, I noticed that a lot of artists that have been working for a few years tend to forget the personal work because commission work just keeps slowing and the money comes in. And that's something that is motivating because you still need to eat and you still need to survive and you need profit to go into the business. But then they kind of lose that heartbeat, that why and why they started making because they're constantly working on someone else's ideas. And it's just really good to keep in mind that there's art and there's design. Commission paintings, for example, are also a really good example of this. It is still art because it is in general from your style of work. However, it is diving into that commission design very deeply like it's a gray area so it depends on if you have the complete free hand in your commission paintings or if you have someone that needs this 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 checked off their list and then it's done and i think that those are also things that we can experience as artists that can definitely get the joy out of the painting and it's good to recognize that both are fine but they're just really different <laughs> If I go back to my personal story, I started out as a fashion illustrator in 2018 because I studied fashion design. So I wanted to do something that kind of fit my knowledge already. And I knew how to make fashion illustrations. I knew how to draw really quickly. And I think that's something that not a lot of people know how to do. So it, it, it kind of grabbed my attention to start out with. As I developed my skill and as I developed my own voice as an artist, I dived a lot more into fine art. And I think at least for the last three or four years, I've been painting a lot more and I kind of left the fashion illustration behind. Although I do like to grab it every once in a while, to do live illustrations, for example. And I really enjoy those because it's just one day I show up, I draw, I don't have to think too much about it, and then I go home. So that's a very commercial thing that I do that I still enjoy doing, but I just don't enjoy doing it every day. In the beginning, I definitely focused more on client-based projects because I just didn't know how to survive financially without those clients and how to survive financially with just my personal projects. I don't think I had the right education for that. I definitely know a lot more now than I used to. I, I, I know that in general, art academies are very bad with the money side, so I don't think it would be very much better if I did a fine art degree. But I just wanna say that I had no idea how to do that in the beginning. So if I would start over, I would definitely dive more into that part of my business, like selling originals to collectors, for example. That's something that I knew existed. I just didn't know how to do that. And it took quite some years to find out a way that worked for me. I'm still developing that. It's still very small. But now at least I know what kind of works. 
and what works for me. Besides that though, besides that personal work selling to collectors, I don't think I would start really differently because the commercial side of the work in the beginning was very important for me to um, realize and to develop and to use now because now I work a lot less with clients however I do know how to work with them and I do know how I can get that back and it learns you so much about running a business because do not forget that you are not just painting away and you're not just doing this for fun I mean you might but it's still a business you still need to earn money doing it and you are your own business here there's not just one client job to go to there's also not just one personal art route to go to you kind of just have to try a lot of different things to find out what works for you and what you like doing but you also just have to start out somewhere if I learned one thing is that you can always change up along the way and if you find out client work for example is not for you you can start doing a lot more personal work I've learned a lot and you're gonna take that with you to your personal work and both things can live alongside and they will actually probably better your work it's also something that could give you a head start in the area that you want to work in instead of having to start over from zero and maybe you find out that you enjoy doing both like I do so next up in this series is about planning a long term it's not a short-term project it's a long-term project and what do we actually want to reach